Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Stationeers. Now you may have just noticed that we've had a huge update just dropped on us in the last couple of days. But I suppose we've been copying all huge updates all month, so another one's no surprise there. And it has changed a lot of things. Um, so there's plenty of work got to do with tutorials, I guess. We find that our, our coolers now consume a lot more power, so just be careful putting in a ton of them. Our Harveys have changed a lot. So it's about time we did a greenhouse update and had a good old build. They used to be automatic, now they're not. I can't complain that now I have to do some extra automation. Oh dear, how horrible. The backup generator we did a while ago, that's no longer needed. The generator will remember if it has partially burnt coal, so we no, no longer need the stacker to drop stuff in. We can just put in a huge silo full of coal and just switch the generator on and off. That simplifies that one. Yeah, it makes it a bit easier. Who wants that? Now, filters now use more power. That depends. Power they use depends on how much, how much gas they're actually pumping through. So a bit more to watch out on there. Make sure we're not spending too much power. And I've also just found out that you can actually use uh, duct tape to fix your solar panels. They all get damaged in the storms now, so you can come up here. Fix them up with a bit of, bit of duct tape. Well, I was say a bit of duct tape, but I've actually had to come up here and put in a container. It takes a lot of duct tape to fix your solar panels. So if you've got a lot of solar panels, use a lot of duct tape. So I've just been up here putting down some catwalks and some safety railings. So it's all, all lovely, nice and health and safety. So with the health and safety in mind, I've done a bit of work with the suit because we do have this chip slot here. I've done a bit of there, bit of work with that one to make the suit a little bit, little bit automated, a little bit safer. So, as we can look after our health and safety, and we're not going to be feeding any more people into here. Right. So let's go look at it and don't jump off the roof when you're talking about health and safety. Might be a good idea, but anyway, pretend that didn't happen. Right. So here we are back in the workshop. Now I've got got the suit hooked up to our logic transmitter because that way we can actually look at it and see what it actually wants to tell us. Uh, if we just point point the configuration tablet at the suit itself it tells us nothing. So these are all the things we can find from our suit. Now so we can find out that there are things like your external pressure and your external temperature. So we can read them to find out when you are in danger and do things like automatically close the visor. I know since pressurising my base I like to walk around with my visor open and it's not until I hop in the airlock and it starts screaming at me that the oxygen's low that I remember that my visor is open. So I just want to make something that'll automatically close it. It's got temperatures as well so when it gets too hot or too cold you can make sure that the suit's closed up. Now when you put the chip in your suit it will control not just your suit but can control your helmet and backpack as well. Now, according to the documentation you'll find on the wiki, your suit, your helmet will be connected to pin D0 on your suit and your backpack will be connected to pin D1. The thing which made it very difficult for me to figure this out, and the thing that wasn't on the documentation, is that your suit is actually attached to the IC housing, which is DB. And without that bit of information, I couldn't get anything to work. So it wasn't until I looked at other people's scripts that I figured that out and thought, Ah, radio all makes sense now. So, with that little nugget of truth in hand, we can make this thing all work. Right, so here's our start of our code. First up, we've aliased the names of our pins so they make more sense to us. The suit has been attached to the, the chip housing, which is DB. Our helmet to D0, our backpack to D1. So we just rename the pins so they make more sense. So in our main loop, what we're doing is loading the suit sensor for the external pressure and saving that to variable R0. We don't really need that information for long, so no point in naming that variable. And we're going to set greater than. So if R0 is greater than 45, set R0 to 1. So we're just copying back over that value because we don't need it anymore. Here we're just saving our helmet open value as uh, true or false, depending on whether or not it's above 45 kilopascals. So if we go in outside, our helmet should close as soon as the external pressure drops below 45 kilopascals. So confirm, 
export that, grab our chip, and we'll go be a guinea pig. So straight into the airlock, push a button without touching the, uh, the air controls on my suit, it's automatically closed. And bingo, on the way back in, we hit 45 kilopascals and the helmet opens. Well, that's just an example of what you can do. You may not want the helmet to automatically pop open for you. If you suddenly pop into a greenhouse where it's all carbon dioxide, you're not going to be able to breathe. And if you try and then open your, close your helmet, the script will automatically open it again. So that's not what we want here. Um, so let's do a bit of a change up. Okay, so here's our code. Now, people familiar with programming may have seen this before, but what we've done here is we've just created an external bit of code to our main loop. So we've still just loaded the external pressure. This time, instead of setting a variable, we're just doing a branch. So we're branching less than 45. So if R0 is less than 45, we're going to jump out of the main loop and jump down to here. Now, this allows us to close the helmet so it's just set open to zero, saving that to the helmet, then jumping back to the start. So if the pressure is less than 45, do this. If it's not less than 45, continue in the code and there's nothing there. So you just jump back to the start again. So if it's less than 45, close the helmet. If it's greater than 45, do nothing. So we should be able to open or close our helmet when we're inside, but outside it should close it for us. Now we guinea pig into the airlock. Eyes are open, close the airlock. Visor's closed. Pressure critical. I can't open my visor out here now. Oxygen As we come critical. back in through the airlock. Now as we come back in through the airlock, my visor is still closed, but I can now open it. So now that we've got a separate function for closing our helmet, we can just reuse that bit of code again and again. So now what we've done is loaded into R0 the external temperature. We decided if it's less than 0 degrees, 273 Kelvin, close the suit. If it's greater than 50 degrees, 323, close the suit. So, as soon as it reaches a close point, it's back to the start. There's no other reason to look any further. Once it's decided it should be closed, that's it. Go from there, just straight back to the start and go again. Now, it's another handy little thing you can use it for is currently, when you open your visor, your air conditioner and air oxygen supply and your filters keep getting used. So if you open your, open your visor, you can then switch them off and your suit then doesn't use any, any of your gases. So one thing you can do from there is link that to the opening of your visor. So as we click them on and off, we can see the values change on the screen there. So our air conditioner is the on value. Our air is the air release. Our filter is called filtration. So we can flick them on and off and make sure we flick them back on again when the helmet closes. I know. So a few more lines of code here. Now of course if we're switching off our filtration and filters and whatnot. We want to make sure that we remember to switch them back on again. So first of all, our close loop here. When we close our helmet, we also want to make sure our filtration, our air release and our air conditioners are turned on. So as part of that routine there for closing the helmet, we also switch them on. If they're on, they're on. Who cares? Just make double sure. So now in our main loop here, we do have, once again, our exceptions to get out of there. If the temperature or pressure is not right, just close it all and back to the top. If we manually close our helmet, we make sure we want to switch them back on again automatically. So we load whether or not the helmet is open to R0. If the helmet is closed, equal to zero, we make sure we jump down to here and make sure those things are switched on. Right, if it passes all those tests, that means the pressure is okay, the temperature is okay, the helmet is open, 
then it's safe to switch off the filtration, the air conditioner and the oxygen. And just a yield at the end of them there just to make sure it's got time for all those new changed values to take, take effect in the code. So if we open our helmet, our air conditioner and everything should switch off. If we close it again, it should hit this exception and switch them back on again. And that should be our code. Right, confirm, export, and we'll do the guinea pig thing again. Right now, so our visor is open. If I close it, we can see that, well, these, these say to switch it off, which means it's actually on. When our visor's closed, if we open it, we see they all change. They're all switched off now, because now I can switch them on. If I head, head for the airlock, and switch that on we should be it should close for us not push any buttons it's closed for us we're all safe so no more strangling myself in the airlock anymore Ta -da! all is good we're safe I'm safe from my stupidity a little bit further well, that's about it for today. Once again, big update, lots of new building and coding to do. And we're safe to do it. Righty-ho. Well, till next time, happy building. See ya.